Hello, everybody. Sorry, we just uh, got a few issues with our communications, but I think we are live. Good. We got in amongst the herd, not around where those lions were. We gave up on them. They're too fat and flat. And so we got in amongst this herd that is all around us now, and we're hoping that we might find some lions. We've now got the other two things that we need, signal and wildebeest. Now we need signal, wildebeest, and predators, and then we will have the trifecta. Anyway, I'll ask Ferg to sort of pan around and show you what's going on here. There we go. You can see lots of wildebeest all over the place, vultures by the dozen. And they're still flying around, even at this time of the day when it's pretty chilly, not very warm at all anymore and yet they are still flying around. And I think that they follow these herds because A, they know that stuff is going to get killed. They also know that a lot of these animals drop dead of their own sort of, well, not of their own volition, but certainly by causes other than crocodiles and vicious uh, lions and cheetah and that sort of thing. And so they pick up the scraps as they go. And I think that for the vultures, this is a real boom time. They seem to be using that term quite a lot this afternoon. Well, certainly twice anyway. So the other thing that I'm listening to here, or listening for, as you look at a marabou stalk and another vulture, is whether or not we can hear any wildebeest alarm calling or see any that are showing signs of some sort of distress. The ones around here, of course, are, well, pretty much relaxed, because you cannot, you cannot track here, of course. You can't get out of the car. The grass is so thick that you can't see where lions walked. And so you really have to kind of use various other methods of lion detection. And one of those, of course, as we use it everywhere, is the alarm calling of animals. And you can hear them doing their gnu gnus. Hello, Riti. You want to know how many prides of lions there are in the Mara? Uh, we don't know, Riti. It's uh, enormous. It's of 1,510 square kilometers. That's some 150,000 hectares. I'll go through the prides that we know of. We know of the Olololo pride. We know the Angama pride. We know the Mugoro pride. We know the Paradise Plains pride. We know the Serena North pride, which could indeed be the same thing as the Paradise Pr Plains pride. We have got the... Uh, Egyptian goose pride, the sausage pride, the border pride, and that's just on the Mara Triangle, which is one third of the Maasai Mara. Over the other side of the river, we've met the Salas pride, we've met the Black Rock pride, we've met the Runkai pride, we have met the. Hey, who, who else have we met? Uh, I feel like there's more, there are one or two more that we have met. Anyway. You can tell from what I've said there that there are a great deal of lion or a great number of lion prides in this area. And I think you're going to find that as this migration moves towards the north, the boundaries between those pride territories are going to become more blurred. And I think also you'll have quite a lot in the way of uh, nomadic animals coming into and out of this area, sort of sneaking a meal here and there. So nomadic males who don't yet have territories and that sort of thing. Righty, shall we try and drive a little bit? Let's see if we can maintain signal and we'll try and drive along a little bit. Ooh, Walcha. I got ooh, copy, snazzy. Ah, there we go. Ah, snazzy, you've got a question. You say, what are these trees called? These are mainly two kinds of trees. One, a Balanites aegyptica, and the other, a shepherd's tree. And I've just bought a trees of the East African uh, savannah, and so I will find out more about those trees in due course. But those are the main ones, and they're not uh, the flat-topped acacias that people think of when they come to an area like this. And I'm not, I guess those impressions come from the Serengeti rather than the Maasai Mara up here. We'll try and get a bit closer to some of the vultures. I think that the Rupel's griffin vulture, which is a very close relative of the white-backed, I think he's a rather beautiful fellow. And then we'll see if we can't get to one. Lots of leopard faced vultures here as well, of course, which are the biggest ones. And in fact, if we look off to the left there, I just park nice and level. No, try and park nice and levelish. There we go. You can see trees full of vultures all over the place.
and those ones with the mottled backs are the Rupal's Griffins. There we go. You can see the light starting to fade slowly. It's not very late yet, but there's quite a lot of cloud in the west, which means that the sunset in the western sun that would be hitting us normally is uh, well gone behind the clouds. There we are. And then just down below that ferg, oh, it's gone now. There was a hitchhiker on one of these wildebeest. And it was, of course, not a, an oxpecker, but a wattled starling. Let's see if I can't find another one of those. Now, normally the wattle starlings where I'm from uh, will fly around the feet and pick up the invertebrates rather than actually hitchhike. Deborah, you want to know when most of the Mara vultures uh, nest? I, I don't know. I, I guess I can find out for you straight away if you like. Let's find out here on my... I'll check my app first and if I don't succeed there I've got a very nice book as well uh, a vulture let's go with well let's go with my favorite which is the rupal's griffin see what it says no it actually just describes describes what it looks like which of course is rather obvious because i'm looking at it ah they nest in Cliff and rocky outcrops, much like the, uh, that's interesting, much like the cape vultures. Ooh, look at the rain. That is distressing. Where are you pointing the camera? Oh, just exactly where we were thinking about going. Well, we're not going to go over there now. Let me just have another quick look. Look here at my other book and see if I can't get a satisfactory answer for what time of the year they breed. Here we go. It. Birds of the Maasai Mara. Let me see if I can't find something on the vultures. It is a very sort of ominous feeling evening, this one. On account of the rain and the cloud, we had a beautiful day without any kind of cloud at all. And then, fairly typically, as the, uh, as the afternoon started to started to fall so the clouds began to build right page number 40 i believe is where i need to be looking here we are no this is mainly just an identification guide i'm afraid so i can't tell you when they breed i'm afraid sorry about that oh here we go breeds in low densities usually nesting on top of the cashew or desert palm tree well, it doesn't say when. I suspect they're fairly aseasonal, you know. There's always a fair amount to eat here. Despite the fact that, obviously, the migration is not always in town. I think this is more kind of a bonus time than it is uh, something that everyone depends on for their staple, you know. And that goes for all the predators as well. There's plenty to eat here all the time. And it's, this is just a kind of bonus time of the year. And you're wondering about the rarest vulture species we can see in the Var Mara. I suspect quite strongly uh, that it is the... Uh, I think you can get... Can you get cape vultures up here? You might be able to. If, you, if not the cape vulture, the white-headed. But again, I'm going to check that up for you quickly. Let's just have a look-see. Well, I mean, you can get a palm nut vulture here in theory. But that would be... So that would be very rare indeed. But uh, I haven't yet to see one here. Egyptian vulture, perhaps. Yeah, you can get Egyptian vulture. That would be very unusual. And no, you don't find cape vultures here, which is quite interesting. You do get white-headed. They are pretty rare. Although, I mean, their distribution would indicate that they're not particularly rare. But I think you will find them. You'll find them pretty rare. So those would be my answers. Somewhere between the white-headed, the Egyptian, and the palm nut. You, well, I mean, if you saw a palm nut here, it would be pretty far out of its distribution, but it is possible, and I'm sure they have been seen here.
All right, we have, we're with the flattest cats in the Maasai Mara, just to see some lions a little while ago, and now we're going to carry on, but Byron would like to tell you more about his spotted flat cat.